Hi, this is Marty Jeffers for the Mindful Eye and the Digital Dark Room. Today I'm starting a series of tutorials on an introduction to Lightroom for the photographer who is just beginning to use Lightroom. This series of tutorials will take you through from opening Lightroom for the very first time, importing your images into Lightroom, processing those images, and finally outputting the images. So let's jump right in and take a look at the Lightroom interface. When you open Lightroom, this is the interface that you will see on the window on your monitor. Across the top, you will see the names of five modules that make up Lightroom. There's the library module where you'll import your images and make them available for processing to Lightroom, the develop module where you'll process your images, and the slideshow, print, and web modules where you can create a slideshow, print your images, or output them to a web gallery. The interface for Lightroom is made up of three panels, a left, center, and right panel. And this structure follows the modules all the way through Lightroom. The only thing that will be different is the content of each of the panels as you go from module to module. In the library module and the develop module, you will spend most of your time importing and developing your images. Before we start importing the images, however, let's take a minute to talk about setting up a file structure for your images. When you import your images from your compact flash card or other uh, camera media card, Lightroom will by default store those images in your picture folder if you're on a Mac or your My Pictures folder if you're on a PC. My suggestion and the suggestion of many Lightroom experts is that you not follow this default of Lightroom. Instead, I would suggest that you set up a folder on your computer to contain subfolders of all the images that you plan to import into Lightroom. Having all of these images and subfolders under one folder will just make your life so much easier going forward using Lightroom. You'll notice that I've set up a folder here called Lightroom Images, and in that folder I've got three subfolders of images that I plan to use in Lightroom or process with Lightroom. Down here under the Pictures folder, you'll notice that there's still a folder called Lightroom which contains Lightroom's catalog. And Lightroom's catalog contains information about the images that you've processed in Lightroom. It contains the metadata and any other adjustments you've made to the image. The Lightroom, the images themselves are not modified by Lightroom. It's the catalog contains a sort of a template that can overlay those images to reflect all the changes you've made. So leaving the Lightroom catalog in the pictures folder is perfectly okay because you're never going to modify the catalog as such by itself. Back to our interface, let's discuss a few preferences before we get started importing some images into Lightroom. And the Lightroom preferences can be found under the Edit menu if you're on a PC or under the Lightroom if you're on a Mac. So click on Preferences and we're going to go to the Preferences uh, dialog box. And the one we're interested in here is the Import dialog box. There are two uh, selections here that we're interested in. One is the Show Import Dialog when a memory card is detected, and the other is the Treat JPEG files next to RAW as separate photos. Showing the Import Dialog box when a memory card is detected means that when you have a card reader with a card attached to your computer, this will launch Lightroom's Import Dialog box automatically. If you don't want that to happen, don't click this selection. The selection to treat JPEG files next to RAW as separate photos is one that you might want to give a little bit of a consideration. 
If you, like many photographers, shoot your images in RAW plus JPEG and you want to have your JPEG images brought into Lightroom along with your RAW images, you must check this box, Treat JPEG Files Next to RAW as Separate Photos. If you don't check this box, then Lightroom is only going to import the RAW images from your uh, media card in your card reader. In the middle section of the Import Preferences, you'll see some information about the D and G creation or digital negative creation. The digital negative file construct was created by Adobe because the camera manufacturers each have a proprietary RAW format. And there was some concern that in the future the camera manufacturers may choose not to support older forms of the RAW files or older formats of the raw files. So Adobe came up with this DNG or digital negative file that is open and non-proprietary. There are several advantages to using the DNG file. One is that they are smaller, usually by about 20%. And two, you don't need that separate sidecar XMP file to go along with your digital negatives that you do when you're processing raw files. So if you decide you want to use the digital negative um, option rather than processing your raw files, then these are the settings that most people suggest that you use. A medium-sized JPEG preview, preserve the raw image, you'll never touch it, compress using a lossless compression method. Now you also have the option to embed our original raw file in your digital negative, but doing this makes the file much larger and slows down the processing. So I would suggest that you not embed the raw image. While we're here in the preferences box, go and click on the general preferences and there are a couple things in here that I want you to see. Uh, loading the most recent catalog is probably a good option since unless you set up several catalogs for lots of things, you're going to be processing everything out of one catalog. And then you have here a choice to select some sounds for uh, to notify you when you finished importing photos or when you finished exporting photos. The one section that we want to go to right now though is this section at the bottom called Go to Catalog Settings. If you click on this and you're going to go to the Catalog Settings interface and the one we're interested in here is the metadata. So go across and click on the metadata uh, setting here, the metadata preferences. And the one thing that I'm particularly interested in talking about here is to automatically write changes to your XMP file. Now if you're processing a raw file and you plan to export that raw file to be used in Camera Raw or to send to someone where they would be bringing it into Camera Raw or any other program that does not process the embedded metadata, then you need to export the XMP file with the raw file. However, if you click on this automatically write changes into XMP, what that will do is to write those changes to the XMP file every time you make changes to the raw file. And this slows Lightroom down. What you can do is leave this option unchecked and at the time you are ready to export your raw file, if, should you need to do that, you can export the XMP sidecar file with it at the same time. So this keeps you from writing and updating the XMP file every time you make modifications to your raw image, but should you need it, you can always get it when you get ready to export those files. Okay, so let's leave that unchecked and close out our preferences setting. Now before 
we start importing the files to the computer. We're going to take a little break and let you take a look around your system to see how many images you have scattered all over your computer that you need to put into one folder for your Lightroom images or those that you want to process in Lightroom. And it'll let you take a minute to look at your preferences and set those up. And then we'll continue with this first tutorial uh, in the second section of that tutorial.